and welcome to another video from Double RL. In this video, we're going to show you how to take apart and do some basic maintenance on this Bachmann WD280 Austerity. Now, the WD stood for uh, War Department, and it was uh, a series of uh, locomotives that were built um, based off the 8F uh, during wartime. And uh, this particular locomotive has a running number of 90566 and it has a Bachmann product code of 32-256 and it's in uh, Bior Black with the uh, late crest and it's a pretty standard Bachmann locomotive uh, you have your tender um, and not much detailing or anything on that um, mainly because the uh, war department made the locomotives as basic as possible so they had uh, a not so great ride but they were trying to cut down on the raw materials that were needed to um, build the locomotives and they were also trying to cut down on the labor costs and time to actually build the locomotives as well. Now this uses the standard um, Bachmann uh, coupling system for uh, tenders and uh, steam locomotives where you basically have the uh, two pinholes on the uh, rod there coming out of the uh, locomotive and then on the underside of the uh, tender you have the pin itself, it's just plastic and you can run the uh, the rod straight through that hole and then you can either connect it up to the first or second one obviously if you connect it to the first one it gets around curves a little bit easier as uh, so here if you have second degree curves um, you may want to use that outer uh, pinhole the inner pinhole is used for you know more close coupling and it should work fine but if you have any problems uh, you can back it back out now if you buy these things second hand uh, sometimes this plastic pin can be broken um, and it's very easily fixed um, actually if you have some of these cheap plastic paint brushes um, like that I use for weathering uh, just so you know the bottom of these if you file them down a little bit will actually fit uh, perfectly in that uh, in that hole so what you can do is you can uh, cut that off and uh, glue it onto the bottom of that, paint it, and you're good to go. So uh, luckily for me on this one, uh, it hasn't been broken off, and it looks like this loco has never been really run. So um, it looks like we're in, in pretty good shape. So one of the reasons I'm taking this apart is uh, it's probably sat in the box for quite a while, and um, the kind of lubricated oil and stuff on it has evaporated or dried out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to basically take it apart uh, just so we can lubricate it and take a look on the inside as well. So um, I'm going to set the uh, tender aside. Now before I take it apart, we'll just give you a quick idea of what comes with this um, in terms of uh, little detailing parts. Uh, it comes with the uh, standard braking rods that go on the underneath of the locomotive and then it also has the uh, usual steps and other uh, steam locomotive um, bits and pieces that go on the uh, buffer beams so it's um, not too bad um, nothing crazy um, this locomotive also came with a pretty cool um, insert uh, that was in the box has a picture of the locomotive has a WD280 and then on the back it actually has a pretty nice uh, history about it as well as a, a technical drawing of the locomotive um, so it's uh, pretty nice our standard uh, Bachmann stuff. So to open this, it's pretty simple. You're going to need a uh, Phillips screwdriver, and I'd also recommend uh, some kind of foam. So I'm using the foam off the uh, box that I had from my dock pole locomotive. Uh, their foam is pretty decent, um, but anything will, will pretty much work. So I'm going to put the one foam sheet down, and then I'm going to use that as a means just to prop the locomotive up. And then um, you probably want some kind of weight or something in behind it. Um, what I'm using are uh, UPS batteries. Now, don't laugh, but I have uh, the power issues that we've had around here. I have quite a few UPSs. Um, so I use this APC UPS battery. It's quite heavy and uh, a locomotive ain't going anywhere. All right, so very carefully, you want to turn the locomotive uh, upside down. And there's a uh, series of screws. Um, so uh, after doing a quick look over the locomotive again, I realized um, that the three screws actually to open this are here. One's over here, it was hidden behind the detailing part, and there's another piece that's here uh, hidden behind the uh, front truck. So uh, what I did was um, very carefully 
um, pried this detailing part out of the uh, underneath here so um, we'll put that back in when we're done and that gives you an access to that screw to open it up you can hear now that's clicking so it should hopefully be somewhat free yeah. and uh, what I do is uh, not only do I set the parts aside but also uh, just lay them out the same way they came out so I have a frame of reference here off to the side um, of which screw came out of where and if I flip it back over again so you can hopefully see this on the camera and uh, we're going to have to undo this one first to get that uh, truck off so the front bogey will come off pretty easily as you can see uh, you probably want to try to avoid losing the screw and it seems to be well lubricated as well so and then uh, you can see, I take that off as well. Uh, it exposes the uh, screw here on the outside. Now there's a smaller screw beside it, but you don't need to undo that one. Um, Bach went very nicely. Um, move it over a little bit. Uh, used one set of screw sizes for the parts that you need to actually remove. Okay, well it's going to require a little bit of extra force or something to get that out, so give me a few minutes and we'll get that out of there. Okay, so it took a little bit of uh, effort, but I did get this uh, finally out of there. Um, it was very, very stiff. So the next thing that you need to do to open this is that um, there's two handrails in the back here, and they're actually uh, directly connected to the chassis. So you just need to very carefully... Um, wiggle it out like so and uh, now that they're free of the chassis let's see like that let's see that they're not free um, we should be able to take the uh, the chassis or the body shell off should being the operative word Okay, so that's not going to come off by itself too easily, so I'm going to take a quick look at the instructions. Hmm. Okay, well give me a minute, let's see if I can figure it out. Okay, so I finally figured out, after uh, taking a couple of minutes of looking at it uh, up close, um, where exactly the problem was. If you look here, um, the connecting rods um, go up, and they have a section, a little small plastic piece that goes up through the chassis, um, located right here, and then there's a more complicated one on the other side. Um, basically the edges of this plastic was catching on the edge of the uh, chassis so when you tried to pull it up um, there was some resistance here in the middle obviously it's important not to force these things as you saw in the video I didn't uh, force it, I basically took a look at it, see what was catching and then uh, figured out what the problem is so with this all I had to do was just wiggle this a little bit and basically I held it from the bottom and wiggled the chassis back and forth while applying a little bit of pressure um, upwards this way um, to try to get it through that and once I got it off on one side 
it was uh, relatively straight, easy, you know, straightforward to get it in off the other side. And the good news is that once it um, once it comes off once, um, that problem no longer appears to be an issue. And if I uh, flick it over, you can see uh, there and there are the two little plastic slits that were causing the problem. Um, so this is uh, not too bad. It's a nice looking chassis. It has a spring, you know, sorry, nice body shell. It's got some uh, sprung buffers on it. Uh, it looks far too clean, so we'll have to weather that at some point. Um, but for now, uh, it's a pretty nice model. It's pretty heavy too. That's uh, got a decent size weight in it. Um, so I'm going to set that aside. I've got some foam here it's going to sit on. So here we have the uh, chassis itself. You can see it's quite simple. has um, you know all your usual valve gear and connecting rods. has uh, your uh, set of wheels here. And uh, you can see here we have uh, just pushed these uh, handrails down to the side and you can see there from the video hopefully um, that if I put on the side maybe it would be easier um, you can see that these handrails um, do move independently of each other back and forth and so I just have those set back like that she might be easier if I put it there there you can see they're just uh, set back and to put those back in they just push into place when you're done so um, this is a quite an easy uh, locomotive, not much to it. Um, here you have your motor, you have your uh, circuit board with your uh, bits of electronics on it. There's your uh, suppression capacitors that looks like um, some uh, metal coils there and then you have uh, your solder joints. Now on this particular model um, there are sometimes some issues with noise. Uh, these um, solder joints here can sometimes touch up against the uh, chassis of the loco and so the way to fix that is to simply redo these solder joints with uh, less solder um, or you could potentially heat them up and try to push the solder um, back with a uh, screwdriver just so that it kind of melts a little bit closer to the um, to the chassis or, but anyway with mine it's not making the noise so I don't need to worry about that um, in terms of lubrication, it's quite easy, um, and this goes for most of these uh, Bachmann steam locomotives. We're going to apply synthetic oil, uh, a small amount, um, to this gearing here. We're going to apply a small amount to the uh, bearing on the back of the motor. And then, because we're using synthetic oil, we're going to be able to uh, apply some to this gear and this gear. Now these gears here are pretty dry, and uh, you can see if I move those, how the loco moves. So um, that's what we're going to do. So in a second, I will show you how to uh, lubricate this. Okay, so um, the first thing you're going to do is uh, use your ball cap uh, to store a little bit of oil in it. Uh, I'm using one of these uh, cheap bottle of water caps. Uh, you probably know the kind where the Bottle of water is pretty cheap uh, compared to some of the name brands, and uh, one of the reasons I like the uh, the cheaper ones, uh, at least for this, is um, they usually have a double inset, so you can store the oil and it won't kind of spread out to the uh, outside edges, and it's also a little translucent, um, so it's easier to see um, any kind of dirt or imperfections that might uh, get into this. Um, and typically, once I'm done um, servicing a couple of locomotives. I will uh, rinse this out and just discard the excess oil. Uh, you will want to make sure you use like a kitchen towel or something like that uh, to make sure that the, uh, the surface is uh, completely clean. So um, the first thing that you're going to do is uh, take the syringe with your synthetic oil and just uh, squeeze it slightly and you just want a little drop like so. Um, and that's basically it, right? So you just want, you can see there the yellow, it's a tiny little dab. And then what you're going to do is take your paper clip and drop your paper clip into that. So you can see there, maybe if it focuses on it, just a tiny amount of oil on the paper clip. And then you're going to run it along the, uh, the two center uh, bearings, like so. Usually this will pick up a fairly small amount of oil, so you can uh, probably get away with doing it maybe twice. And like I said, 
you want to do a little dab and you want to put that on the back of the motor like so and then finally this has two plastic gears and so what we're going to do is put a little bit of oil just rub it across there and then on the bottom motor as well there's two sets of things so there's one there and then there's one also in there and that's that's it it's as simple as that and so what you'll do next is uh, kind of let the running in process uh, take place maybe for at least five minutes in each direction uh, ten or fifteen if you can uh, if you have the time to do it and um, that's uh, all you need to do so here with the uh, austerity um, you can see that it's not DCC ready right so it's been wired up uh, directly so if you actually wanted to uh, chip this for a DCC layout you can have a little bit of extra work on your hands um, I'm actually going to do it um, I'm just going to use a locomotive on the DC section of the layout so I don't need to really uh, worry about that um, but it is possible you'd end up having to undo some of the solar joints and uh, figure out where you're going to install a decoder um, the good news is that there's a fair amount of room in this section here um, where the motor is housed so you may be able to get a uh, decoder in there um, I don't think you'll be able to get a very big decoder in there so you might have to go with a 4 or 8 pin um, option but it is, uh, it is possible. Now if you also want to add weight to this locomotive uh, some folks have used the uh, kind of a liquid sort of a lead weights that you can get and have poured them into that little gap that's down there um, that's one option uh, personally I think the chassis itself and the body shell are uh, sufficiently weighted uh, for anything that you'd normally want to do alright so um, I'm going to show you how to reassemble the locomotive and then we'll uh, show it to you running on the layout so first thing you want to do is uh, basically line up those components like so and then make sure it clicks into place you want to make sure that the loco is flush between the shafts and the body shell which it is uh, it's looking pretty okay so next we're going to do and reinstall the center screw so we're going to drop that in place You're just going to tighten it until it won't turn anymore. You don't want to over tighten it. Uh, next, we're going to replace the rear screw, which is a little tricky. There it goes. And again, you just want to. Tighten it until it won't turn anymore, like so. And then finally, we will reinstall the front screw, like so. And this was the one that was a little stiffer um, than the others. And what I'm going to have to do is probably. Make sure it's actually going at the right angle. There you go. Okay, now finally, we're going to reinstall the front bogey. Uh, so you want to take the uh, shielding here and drop that into place, like so. You want to take the front bogey. Now if uh, you want to remove the front coupling, uh, you want to use a uh, KD coupling or you just want to get rid of the coupling altogether, uh, you can, now's a good time to remove it. To remove it, simply remove that screw. And we're going to leave it alone, so we're just going to put 
put it in place. And then finally, this is the tricky part, um, with, especially if you have your fingernails, um, you're going to want to, oops, yeah, I told you it was tricky. Um, you kind of want to try to, the bogey itself is being pushed up by this uh, metal piece. And so if I show you, if I let go of the bogey, it's just not going to go into place. So you kind of, what you have to do is put the screw over the top of it. Actually. Like so. And you want to make sure it is in the correct spot. So we've got that in place, hopefully. And there we go. See. Okay. Now, one of the things you want to do is you don't want to over tighten this. You can see there I've over tightened this, so I've restricted the movement. So once you've got it going in as far as it will go without force, uh, you want to hold on to the front bogey with your fingers and just release it about half a turn, a quarter of a turn, just a hair like so. Now you can see it's got some free movement, but it's not loose, so it's not going to work its way out. Um, and then usually it helps just to kind of make sure it is somewhat in place. So you don't want to make you want to make sure that it's tight enough that it moves and is loose enough. So you want to make sure it's loose enough that it moves. But, um, or tight enough that it moves, but loose enough that it's not going to uh, restrict the movement, but not too loose that it's going to come loose every time um, it, go around, it goes around a few curves. Now, the final piece is the tricky bit, which is this uh, little plastic detailing part. And I'm not gonna sure if I can actually get this back in here um, at this angle with the camera, but I will try. Uh, now, if you look at it, there's a little hook piece that kind of goes into this plastic uh, piece right here. So we're gonna try to line it up as best we can. Yeah, there's, there's no way I'm gonna do this on the camera. So just give me a second and uh, I will move it and okay. take care of it. So I got that back in place. The good news is once you line it up with that and just click it in, it uh, goes in pretty easily. The next thing you wanna do is line up the, uh, the handrail with the hole just equally as fiddly. And um, once you have that lined up, you can uh, just push it through. Like so. All right, now I'm going to do the other side. And just so you know, the handrails do come out, so be careful. Um, I had to go and uh, reinstall that one on the side. Okay, so I'm going to go put the handrail back in and then we'll show it to you running on the left.